I've now turned my board back to its original position and I'm going to put just a little bit more red and yellow on the flowers, particularly in the middle here where the wet background ran in. It's taken a little bit of colour, so I'm just going to put some bright red. And because the paper is now completely dry, it will stay where I put it. And a little bit here. You do need to mix the red up, as I said at the beginning of the demonstration, quite strongly because when you've got water on the paper already, that's adding an extra layer of water, as it were, and it will make the painting dry paler. That's lovely there now, where I've got that bright uh, red. I'm just going to put some yellow in with it as well. Just make it a little bit more vibrant. And we'll have that one a little bit darker there as if it's underneath that one because the two of them have run together. As I said before, I don't want proper flowers. They are abstract flowers rather than proper poppies. That's just to brighten them up a little bit because if you're going to paint red vibrant poppies, you want red vibrant poppies, not pallid pink ones. That's much brighter. And I still like the little bits of white around the edge. I am going to do some more work to the centres in a minute, but the next thing I'm going to do uh, is place in a few leaves. And for that, I'm going to use just sap green on its own. And I'm using the same big brush. And poppy leaves are quite shaggy, so you haven't got to paint distinct leaves. All I want you to do is just place in a few shapes, but sort of make them shaggy like that if you can. I'm going to put in a few stalks and then a few more leaves. We'll have one coming through there, down there. This one can come up and round. We've got one coming down from here. We'll have him down here. And we've got one, two, three stems and we've got five flowers. So we need to place in another couple. While I've still got the green on my brush, I'm going to put one or two little buds in. And the buds tend to flow nicely. They curve and twist. So you can use your imagination here and just fill in some of your empty spaces. I'll start with three. I can always add more later. And the little buds are that shape. I'm going to leave a little space in the middle because I'm going to put some red in when the green has dried. Now I can see where I need to place a few more leaves. This time I'm going to make the paint thinner. I'm going to put some more water with the sap green and I'm going to put just a bit of Payne's Grey in it to give me a slightly darker green. So these leaves will be a little bit more subdued. Uh, we'll perhaps have one down here coming from that little bud and one there. We can have one coming up here. Perhaps one in here. Don't try and paint leaves that are too detailed. It's just shapes, rather like the flowers. We've almost finished our poppies now, but there are just one or two little final touches that I want to make. First of all, I'm going to put a little bit of red in the centre of the buds and at the end, of course, where the petals are starting to uh, emerge from the bud. And then I want to make the centres a little bit darker, so I'm just going to put a little bit more of Payne's Grey around. I want them to sing out just around that centre, just to make them a little bit more vibrant. I'm sure you can see the difference there with just those few little touches of the paint spray. Got quite a lot of paint on the end of my brush and it's quite strong. I'm going around those little round centres now because I'm going to finish those off with a pen. I 
and I've got a tiny brush here. Um, it was an old masking fluid brush. And if you use a pointed brush to do the little stamens, sometimes you can't get the right shape. You get a dash a stroke rather than a, a little round stroke. So this little damaged masking fluid brush, I've just cut the end off, just a tiny bit at the end, and I'm going to dip it in the Payne's Grey. And I'm going to use it at an angle like this rather than like that. I'll start up here. Don't overdo this. You just want to show a few stamens here and there. Don't have them going round and round in a circle. Otherwise it will look like a wagon wheel. I think that's enough. We can always add some more later if we want to. The final touch is just a few strokes around the flowers and leaves with this fine felt tip pen. And all I'm going to do in the middle of each of these centres, I'm just going to do a little circle like that or a little half circle and just a few little strokes radiating out from the middle. just makes the centres a bit more interesting. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to outline the flowers and the leaves, but I'm not going to carefully go around, I'm going to scribble around because we still want a loose abstract effect. So I'm going to start with these leaves. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I, I think it's quite nice to do right at the very end. I call it shaping up with a pen. There, we finished our vibrant poppies. This technique can also be used for things like an enemy painting. Any sort of shaggy flowers or flowers that aren't really too distinct, you can do in this wet in wet style, using the appropriate colours, of course. And don't be afraid of letting all the colours run together. That's half the fun. I hope you've learned a few more interesting techniques which will help you paint flowers with confidence. Enjoy your flower painting, most of all. Have fun. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.